Hello kids! This is Teacher Urbet. I am your English teacher. This is another day for you to learn new things. But before we start, please prepare your pen and your self-learning modules. Everything ready? Let's go! We are now on the seventh lesson of our third module. We have a very interesting lesson today. I'm sure you will enjoy learning it. Our lesson would be about collective nouns and verb agreement. Today, you will learn how to identify collective nouns. You will also learn how to compose clear and coherent sentences using appropriate grammatical structures about collective nouns and verb agreement. Now, let's talk about nouns. We all know that noun is a name of a person, a place, a thing, an animal, or an event. Just like noun, a collective noun, these are names for a collection or a number of people or things. So, if they are a group of people and if they are a group of animals or a group of things, there is a specific term for that group and we call that collective nouns. Now, uh, do you want to know a story about collective nouns? Well, I'm sure you do. So here is the whimsical history of collective nouns. In the 15th century, the rich people or the aristocratic British hunters invented funny labels for a group of animals like a gaggle of geese, a skulk of foxes, and a charm of finches. This whimsical way of naming the animals passed on from generation to generation, giving rise to pot of whales, mauve of kangaroos, and a clouder of cats. Lots of people use collective nouns elsewhere, like the poets and the scientists. And there seems to be an appropriate collective noun for each group of animals. A group of mules should be called a baron of mules. Terms like a leap of leopards and a romp of otters give us a sign of their behavior. Terms like a murmuration of starlings and a crash of rhinos let us hear them nearby because that's the sound they create when they are in a group. Terms also like a murder of crows, an exaltation of larks, make us feel a particular way due to their presence. Just like the 15th century hunters, we also collectively noun modern stuff like a mischief of Pikachus and a cog of robots. This is a story of people showing their passion and appreciation for nature, languages, and fun. We even have the Ballet of Nutcrackers, a parliament of owls, flutterby of butterflies, knot of toads, labor of moles, wisdom of wombats, and so on, are a whimsy of collective nouns. Alright, so that is the history of collective nouns. Now let's talk about the anatomy of the collective noun phrase. Okay, so let's um, give an example this one. This is an, um, an, an example of a collective noun phrase. A parliament of owls. Alright. 
So let's try to dissect this and um, check its anatomy. Okay, so a parliament of owls. Now, this one right here, par parliament, is the, co uh, the collective noun. While of owls, that is the of phrase. Owls there is the object of the of phrase. That is uh, the noun being referred to by our collective noun, which is parliament. So, and other examples of collective nouns are a mob of kangaroos. We, um, I think we discussed that earlier during uh, the history. A smack of jellyfish. Oh, by the way, let's go back. Um, this one, um, the, the noun of the of phrase, owls, there should be in um, plural form, okay? You don't say a parliament of owl. It should be in plural form, a parliament of owls, because they are many, okay? But we are calling them parliament as a group or as a unit. Okay, so again, a mob of kangaroos, a smack of jellyfish. There's, uh, there's no such thing as jellyfishes. Okay, jellyfish is both plural and singular in form. Okay, it it could be, you know, um, plural in meaning but singular in form. Okay, or it could be singular in meaning and singular in form. Next is a flight of butterflies. It could be a flight of butterflies. It could also be a flutterby of butterflies. Next is a squabble of seagulls, a pandemonium of parrots, a flock of birds, a pod of dolphins, a pride of lions. Pride because they are the king of the jungle. A school of sharks. Okay. School of sharks. A school of whales. A gaggle of geese. We call them gaggle because, you know, they, they um, when the sound of the geese, when they produce their sound, and when they are in a group, they gaggle. So that's why they were called a gaggle of geese. A brood of chickens. A herd of cattle, a herd of elephants, a flock of sheep, a litter of puppies, a troop of monkeys, a pack of wolves, an army of ants, a murder of crows. Um, ants here, we have referred, referred them as army because um, diba ants have queens and they have soldiers as well. So that's why an army of ants. A murder of crows. We call them murder because um, there is a superstitious belief that when someone sees a crow, you know, someone in the family will die. So that's why when you see a group of crows, they call it a murder of crows. A band of musicians, a block of apartments, a board of directors, a bouquet of flowers, a bunch of keys, a bundle of clothes, a cast of actors, a chest of drawers, a choir of singers, a class of students, a cloud of dust. A clump of trees, a cluster of stars, a clutch of eggs, a collection of books, a crew of sailors, a crowd of spectators, a fleet of ships, a flight of stairs, a flock of tourists, a gang of boys. A gang of workmen, a troop of dancers, a pack of cards, a panel of experts, a range of mountains, 
a stack of wood, a staff of teachers, a string of pearls, a swarm of bees, a team of players, a tribe of natives, an army of soldiers, an audience of listeners, a bunch of grapes. That's ah, uh, okay. A bunch of grapes. A wad of notes or a wad of cash. Okay, so there you go. Those are um, examples of um, collective nouns. So there are a lot of collective nouns used, but those are some of them. Alright, so let's go ahead and proceed to our verb agreement. Now again, for people, um, we may use board, choir, class, committee, family, group, jury, panel, and staff. Those are other examples of collective nouns used to describe a group of people or used to call a group of people. Now, for animals, um, again, you may use flutter by, flock, herd, pod, swarm, school, a school of fish, or a shoal of, of fish. Okay, um, Fishes can be um, named a school of fish or a shoal of fish. If they are swimming together in harmony, that's a school of fish. But if they are not swimming in harmony, um, if they are swimming on different directions, that's a shoal of fish. Okay, so it's a group of fish, but they're not um, swimming together in harmony. So that's a shoal. Um, for things, we may use a bunch, a bunch of keys, collection, fleet, that's for, sh for ships, flotilla, pack, or set. Alright, so here. Now, singular and plural verbs with collective nouns. A plural collective noun takes a plural verb. For example, families enjoy this restaurant. Families there is plural. That's why um, your verb there uh, is plural in form, which a verb does not have an S if it is plural, okay? A noun has an S if it is pluralized, but when a verb is pluralized, it doesn't have an S. Always remember that. They are opposite. Okay? So, families there is plural. Enjoy is the... Um, it takes a plural verb. Enjoy. Okay, next. A singular collective noun usually takes a singular verb. So... Our family, since family is a singular um, collective noun, enjoys this restaurant. So there is an S with our verb. Our verb now has an S. It is because um, a, singular, a singular form of the verb has an S. Okay? It's different than the noun. Alright, now let's proceed when to use a singular verb when all the members of a collective noun are performing an action as a single unit use a singular verb if pareho tanan sila og gihimo like ang ilang action is usara then you will be using a singular verb okay when um, they are performing we, when they are performing an action as one unit as a single unit again performing an action as a single unit let me emphasize that so um, one example is the chamber orchestra often plays at the art center okay so sila mang tanan ang nag play sa ilang mga instruments to produce one music okay usang a music ang you produce when they all play there is only one music produced 
because nga nang one music produce man because they are playing it in harmony they are playing it together they are performing the action as a single unit so that's why it is considered singular okay so the group is acting as one so the group is a single unit it's singular that's why um, your verb there is also singular which is place another example is the cast is celebrating the success of the play with a party after the performance so all of them are celebrating uh, the success of the play okay so silang pala nag celebrate walay usa nila nga wala nag celebrate they are performing the celebration as one the act of celebrating um, the success of the play as a single unit so that's why they use is okay this the verb is which is singular now next a wolf a wolf pack hunts as a group okay so kanang ang a group of wolves is a pack of wolves diba so a wolf pa pack hunts as a group all of those group of wolves you know the pack of wolves they hunt ngita sila pagkaon as a group wa silang tanan nga grupo nagtinabangay og kuha sa pagkaon di ba nagtinabangay sila og siguro na ay deer nga ilang gipatay ilang gi tabangan um og hunt sa food nila they are working as a team they are doing or performing the action as a single unit that's why they are considered one okay so meaning one singular no it's a single team that is why their verb there is hunts singular all right now for our um last sentence fourth sentence the fleet was anchored in the channel so the fleet was again fleet is a group of ships okay a fleet of ships okay so it was anchored in the channel so all of those um ships are anchored to the channel they if if, if the ships are anchored to the channel if all of them are anchored to the channel then they are considered as one okay they are doing uh, the action of anchoring it to the channel as a team as, as a single unit as a single group so that's why we have there a singular verb okay now when to use a plural verb when the members of a collective noun are performing an action as individuals use a plural verb in this case all or some members of the group are doing something independently of the other members the group is not acting together as a unit so um it is opposite to um the other explanation no diba um they are doing it as a single unit silang tanan o nagplay sa or ang orchestra nagplay sa ilang instruments silang tanan nagplay sa ilang instruments okay kanang they are working it as a they are doing it as a group however if they are not doing it as a group if naay ka ng koan, if some members are um, doing something independently, wa sila, wa sila ni appeal sa group, then that could, that is considered a plural collective noun. So, it should take a plural verb. Now, for example, the orchestra are tuning their instruments. Okay, so, 
when you tune an instrument, kan abang imong tarungon ang tono sa guitar or tono sa piano, kan abang nakai ayuhon anana lahi, lahi na sila ug way sa pag tono. They are not the same. Silang tanan lahi lahi ug buhaton. That is why they are not considered a single unit. Because lahilain ang pagtuno sa guitar, ang pagtuno sa piano, ang pagtuno sa kanang violin. So lahilain o way ang pagtuno sa um, mga instruments, mga musical instruments. So that's why they are not considered a single unit because they are not doing it as a team. Okay? They are not doing it as a single unit. Okay, na mga manok. Okay, next. Um, our next sentence is The cast have been practicing their lines. Okay, so this is um, a cast of theater actors or celebrities bakaha for a movie. They don't have the same lines. Silang tanan, line lain og lines. So, if they are practicing their lines, they are doing it independently on their own, okay? They are doing it independently on their own pa. They are doing it independently. So, that's why they are not considered as a single unit. Okay, kasabot, lain-lain sila og gibuhat. Wa sila, di, dili sila tanan pariha gibuhat. Okay, so, since they are not um, a single unit, therefore, that is, the na, the collective noun there is plural, so it should take uh, the plural form of the verb, which is have. Okay, next. The flock were running off in every direction. Ang flock ko no, nanagan ko no sila in every direction. Na I left, na I right, na I up, na I down. Okay, na I north, na I south, na I east, na I west. Lain lain sila ogi daganan. They are not performing the action as a single unit. So, since others are um, doing it differently, okay, than the other members, uh, flock there is considered plural. So that's why um, they are using a plural form of the verb. Next. The staff disagree on the proposal. Okay, ang staff ko nun ni disagree sa proposal. However, when you are disagreeing and agreeing, dili tanan disagree. Di po tanan agree. There are those who disagree and there are those who agree. The fact nga na ay propose both pa sa both ang nag-propose and na-agree na si, agree na si Jadaan. So, ang mga nang disagree, bahala pang nang disagree ang tanan, pero naagapoy usa nila. Nga ni agree ang naghimo sa proposal. So, um, someone is doing it independently. They are not um, doing the action as a group. Okay? So, they are not doing it as a single unit. That's why, plural, plural verb ang naa. Alright. So here, in many cases, it may sound more natural to make the subject plural in form by adding a word like members. So, um, ang uban nagamit o word nga members. Pero members para na sa kanang mga tao, iba members of the committee para na sa kanang um para na sa collective noun used to um, to name people okay so for animals you do not use members so these are examples the members of the orchestra are tuning their instruments so na members claro na kaayo the cast members have been practicing their lines Number three, 
the staff members disagree on the proposal. So, they added members, which is a plural, in, which is um, a plural noun, so that it would be natural sounding. Okay? So, there you go. And that's it. That is our lesson. Now, um, I'd like you to proceed in answering your uh, module. You have their instructions on how to answer them. So, basically, what we have here is just the discussion, but in composing coherent sentences, you know, with the agreement of the verb and the collective noun, you have to answer that in your module. So that would be all and thank you.